All lymphomas are not created equal. We see some different forms of lymphoma in different locations in the cat's body, and they can act or behave very differently. This series of vlogs is all about cat lymphoma, what I call the Cliff Notes version for lymphoma. And I wanted to make it brief, but as I was going through and making this series of videos for you, I realized there was a lot of information. And I want these videos to be brief, and I want them to be really informative. So what I decided to do is to take this little series on cat lymphoma and break it down for you. And that basically, I'm gonna give you the top six things that I want you to know about cat lymphoma. But I'm gonna break it into three vlogs. And then there's actually gonna be one more vlog after that where we're gonna go through the different chemotherapy options. So here are my top six things that I want you to know about cat lymphoma. In this first vlog, we're gonna talk about what lymphoma is and what causes and the risk factors for lymphoma. Let's do it, let's start with number one. Okay, number one, what is lymphoma and why do you care? The reason that we care is unfortunately, it's the most one of the most common cancers that we see in cats and it's estimated to be about 30% of all cancers that we see. But all lymphomas are not created equal. We see some different forms of lymphoma in different locations in the cat's body, and they can act or behave very differently, as we say. And so it's really important when you're talking to your veterinarian and you're talking to your oncologist that we get that information. Just as in dogs as in, and as in people, this is a cancer that you're not going to surgically cure. It's a systemic disease, meaning it's throughout the cat's body, and chemotherapy is in general going to be the treatment of choice. I want you to know that like people and like dogs, treated cats will live longer than untreated cats. So. What do I mean by that? That cats that get chemotherapy in general are gonna live longer. And if you're new to this channel, and if you are, welcome. Thank you for finding me. I'm sorry that you have, but I'm here to provide information. Of dogs, cats, and people, cats tolerate chemo the best. So cats that are treated are going to tolerate chemo very well. And like I said, cats tolerate chemo better than dogs, and dogs and cats tolerate chemo better than people. So that's really important information because I know it's really scary. So you'll definitely want to check out some of my other videos on chemotherapy and chemotherapy side effects. And I always put the links below so you can easily find them, but you'll want to check out the chemotherapy playlist and also the cat lymphoma playlist as well. So again, they tolerate chemo very well. One of the things that is really frustrating when I'm teaching veterinarians and interns and talking to pet owners is that cats are a little bit less predictable. So dogs pretty consistently have a very high response rate with multi-agent chemotherapy and cats are a little less predictable and we'll talk about that when we talk about prognosis. But we're gonna spend most of the time in this video, talk, video talking about GI lymphoma because that is by and far the most common form of lymphoma that we see in cats, which again is very different than dogs. So that is you know, really the overview. Uh, one thing that I should say just as a general overview that lymphoma is a cancer of one of our white blood cells called the lymphocytes. Um, and again, one of the, the challenges with cats as opposed to dogs is in dogs, a more common form is of the lymph nodes under their jaw, by their shoulders and behind their knees. So sometimes your vet will feel it on exam or you will actually feel it. But in kitty cats, this tends to be internal. So you're not actually gonna feel the cancer, but you're gonna see the symptoms related to the cancer. So usually vomiting, diarrhea, weight loss, and either you know changes in appetite to complete anorexia, so them not wanting to eat. So it's, it, it is a very different cancer, but again, it's a treatable cancer as we'll go through. And one question I always get asked, and I think this is a good way to wrap up the intro, is would I treat my own pet? You know, many clients ask me that. And I absolutely would treat my own cat and I have treated my own cat for lymphoma. So I feel really comfortable saying that. So 
Doesn't mean that you have to, but I think it's important to get educated and make an educated decision because what always frustrates me is someone who can't, comes to see me like two months after their cat was diagnosed and then the cancer is more advanced and they say, oh, I wish I had met you and had you know the options to treat when we, the cancer was first diagnosed. So I'm glad you're here so you can make an educated decision and that I can help you through this process. Second thing that I want you to know about cats with lymphoma are some of the known causes. And we all wanna know what causes lymphoma and it's just not an easy thing to answer for most cancers, but there are a few things that have been associated and documented to cause lymphoma in cats. So I'm gonna go over those. The first one is the feline leukemia virus. And this was way more prevalent in the cat population, 1960s to the 1980s. And we've really done a much much better job in you know with catteries and shelters in testing for feline leukemia virus and you know decreasing that virus from the cat population which is a good thing because cats that are FELV positive are about 60 times more likely to develop lymphoma and cats that have the FELV virus do not respond as well to chemotherapy, so it's a negative prognostic factor. They also typically do not have the GI form, but they have the mediastinal form, which is a big lymph node inside the chest in front of the heart. So FELV, feline leukemia virus, is the first thing. The second virus that has an indirect role in causing lymphoma is FIV, so feline immunodeficiency virus. Not quite as great a risk, only about five to six times as risk. It doesn't cause the cancer directly the way the feline leukemia virus does, but it suppresses the immune system, so it has an indirect role on causing lymphoma. If you're an FIV positive kitty, you will still respond to chemo just as well as if you didn't have the virus. So it's not the same negative prognostic factor that we talked about for FELV positive. If you have both, it's almost about an 80 time increased risk that you'll have, that you will develop lymphoma over the course of the cat's life. Um, again, we talked about immunosuppression. We also know that cats that get kidney transplants that are in chronic immunosuppressive therapy are at risk for developing lymphoma. So it really highlights the importance of the immune system and when that immune system is compromised and suppressed, there is an increased risk of lymphoma. Another thing that has come out in the last couple of years is there was a study that was looking at cats that lived in homes with smokers. And so environmental tobacco smoke increased the risk of lymphoma about two and a half to about 3.2 fold. So those kitties in those homes with smokers were more likely to develop lymphoma. So those are the known causes. People have looked at diet and some other things as well to look at associations. But again, those are the known causes that have been looked at with lymphoma. So now you know what lymphoma is and now you know some of the risk factors. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to comment below. Hopefully I have covered some of your basic questions. In part two, we are going to be talking about the most common form of lymphoma, gastrointestinal or intestinal lymphoma. And we're gonna be talking about high grade and low grade lymphoma. And I also am gonna be talking about some of the other forms of lymphoma as well. So be sure to join me next week. Thanks so much for watching. And I'm looking forward to seeing you at the next video.